All right, guys, I just finished grading Tua at the Chicago Bears, week 9, 2022. I expected to be really impressed by what I saw, just by having this game on my fifth screen, seeing a few snapshots of it, and frankly, by how many points the Dolphins scored. Uh, I shouldn't be surprised anymore, but it still perks my interest every time I see Twitter go on a frenzy about how the Dolphins just can't stop winning with Tua in the starting lineup. But alas, I wasn't that impressed. Let's get to why. It starts off hot, but it peters out towards the middle and end. To the film. Drive one, Bears already got a field goal on their opening drive. If you want to see the Justin Fields video, I'll have a little fucking link thingy. There you go. Getting the curse words out early. Fooling nobody. Alright, first pass of the game. That's a nice throw. About, let's call it 15, 17 yards downfield. Clean pocket. Threads it in there between two defenders. It is a good throw. It would be a great throw if you had put it a little higher so that Waddle could run through it and get yards after catch, but it is a sol it is a good throw. That is a pedestrian throw. Now, I'm going to say it again, because apparently I have to say it every video. Pedestrian does not mean bad. It means normal, expected, mundane, routine. If your quarterback misses a pedestrian throw, you go, ah, fuck, how? And if he makes it, you don't go, you don't stand up and clap. You're not thrilled. You're just like, okay, yeah, keep it going. That's good offense. So a pedestrian throw is neither positive nor negative. It's neutral. That ain't pedestrian. That's another good throw. In fact, that might even be great. Let's see. Alright, so he knows he's got man. Oh, they bailed out. Played zone. That's at the fucking 35 from the 50. Yeah, let's call that a great throw. That was really good. Play action. Going deep. Wants it all. Okay, this is defensive pass interference all day. But again, this is, this is the classic Tua problem. Watch how underthrown this is. Tyreek has over-the-top leverage. What does that mean? It means there's nobody here, but there are people underneath him to his left. And then the sideline takes care of his leverage to the right. So, if Tyreek, if this ball's deeper, nobody can contest it except Tyreek Hill. This ball should have been in the back of the end zone. Check it out. If the ball's here... Imagine Tyreek Hill doesn't have to stop, and he gets to keep on slowly moving backwards away from the defensive back. Now he doesn't have to jump through a guy to try to make the catch. He can simply make the catch. Ball should have been out earlier, and it should have been further downfield. Too a fucked up. It's a bad throw. He doesn't pay for it, because the Bears defensive back fucked up even more egregiously, but first drive, Tua has a great throw, a good throw, a pedestrian throw, and a bad throw. He's... He's sampling almost every kind of throw. Pedestrian, I mean, you guys don't need to see anything more about it. It's a good throw. That's a really good throw. So, it's 15 yards downfield, almost 20 yards downfield. Yeah, call it 20 yards downfield. He abuses the leverage that Jalen Johnson has. I hope we get the replay. Yeah, here we go. So, this is pretty open, right? But... You do have Jalen Johnson running back across. So if you put the ball in between these two, Jalen Johnson probably picks it off. The fact that he puts it on Tyreek's back shoulder makes it a catch. So that's a great throw. Really impressive. It looks like Tyreek Hill might have to adjust, like it might be a bad throw because he spins around, but that's exactly what Tua needed him to do. That's a great throw. Pedestrian plus pocket move because there was a rusher in his face. Now this throw is hard to grade, or not hard, but uh, let's say tricky. See, it's downfield, so your instinct is, oh, that's positive, that's good. But when you see how open it is, I mean, there's literally nobody on him. That's it's a. This is why most RPOs are pedestrian, and this this is no different. It's a routine throw. Yes, it's 13 yards downfield, and it's got a teeny bit of zip, but 
that's not like an arm talent throw. That's not a difficult throw, and neither is that. And this is not a knock against Tua. These are not bad things. These are neutral plays. His only negative play so far is that long defensive pass interference that should have been a touchdown and he didn't pay for because of the penalty. Again, routine. It's his one, two, it's his second read, maybe, at the worst, and it's a flat. If you're impressed by that, I'm sorry. I, I don't think there are many of you who are. First and goal, and again, first read, wide open, that's pedestrian. Like The credit for this play should go to whoever the hell made Tyreek Hill that open, be it Tyreek Hill or Mike McDaniel. Credit doesn't go to Tua, and that's okay. The points still count. It's good. Damn, what a hole. All right. So this is a little bit of mobility. He had a clean pocket. I can't see what was downfield, and the All-22 is not out yet, so well, I'm not going to know. What I do know is that Tua decided to run, and he got, what, three three yards? Zippity-doo-dah. We'll call that a neutral run. It's the same effect as a check down. Whatever, fine. That's a plus pocket move and a bad throw. That throw was there. He should have got it there. I know it was difficult, but he gets bonus points that mitigate the negative play because he navigated the pocket really well. He had two positive movements on that play. That was a great ball. I mean, Tyreek Hill makes it easy, but you still got to hit him. This ball is 20 yards downfield. It's pretty much in stride. Good job. Great. If that ball's a little bit more accurate, if it's a little bit inside and a little bit upfield, it's a touchdown. If he doesn't have to stop and turn like that, that's a touchdown. And that's what separates this throw from an elite throw. But it is a great throw. It's rare that teams don't score points on drives with two great throws. So... Great throws are really good. Routine. Don't think that needs explanation. That's a really nice pocket movement and a bad throw. He I, he just slipped. I mean, that, it might not be his fault, but it's a bad throw. So it's a plus movement and then just a bad throw. If that's on target, Waddle catches that and gets upfield. And missed field goal. That's a really shitty way to end a half. I don't mean shitty in that Tua played shitty. It's just it's unfortunate. You've got a play right there to get the first down, and then you miss the field goal. Doesn't matter. Tua comes back with a good throw. That was deep downfield, but there was literally nobody covering Tyreek on that play. He had, he had sufficiently scared everybody away from him. So I'm not going to give Tua a great throw for what amounts to a practice throw. Runs are important, but we don't watch them because that's not what we're here for. Runs are important because then you can do crap like this. What a play. Okay. The fake design is beautiful. The rollout is good. And the throw is elite. I want to see the tight copy. Here we go. Alright, I don't need to see the play drawn up, just run the play. I can figure it out from there. Ah, oh, they're too zoomed! I mean, okay, maybe it's not an elite throw, because it was much more open than I thought, but it's definitely a great throw. There was a lot of separation there. I know two Anon's going to be on me, so let's pause it for them. This is... This is two yards laterally, as well as at least three yards deep because that line in the B is five yards deep in the end zone and he's at about the goal line. So this is this is plenty of room. 
this linebacker is absolutely not in a position to make a play. The the defensive back trailing is is gone. It's wide open. It's an elite throw. It took legitimate velocity on the run. Ball placement was per- was really good. Not perfect, but really good. It's a great throw. Tua is playing really well so far. And it's a good thing that Tua is playing so well because the Bears refuse to go away. Even with the uh, the special teams touchdown they allowed. All right, Tua has plenty of time to set up in the pocket, and this is a bad throw. I know what you're thinking. This is a drop, and it totally is. But look at how he leads the receiver back into the defensive back. Give me the tight copy. Give me the fucking tight copy. Nope, they won't. Only for touchdowns, I guess. So, if that ball is out here, first of all, this guy doesn't have a chance to make the play on it. Or at least as much a chance. Right? You put it a little higher, so it goes over here. He can't jump to it. Now, I don't think that Tua has the arm to get it there quick enough, and that's a really long, really tough throw. Routine. But the fact is, Tua let his receiver back into danger, and the receiver got the ball broken up. I don't think I need to tell you guys that that last play was pedestrian. And that was good. Second read, wide open in the middle of the field. Boom. Good. A lot of motion, a lot of things going on. Smart run game. It really is a joy to watch Mike McDaniel work. He's just incredible. So this is this looks silly and bad, but it's actually a pretty good play from Tua. It's a plus pocket movement to avoid the sack in the first place. A normal quarterback probably gets sacked right there. He avoids it. He also gets the ball away while falling, which is impressive. So that's two plus pocket movements, or positive movements in the pocket, and a throwaway. It's a positive throwaway, and that is a good throw. Well, let's be careful. Yay. Yeah, that's a pedestrian throw. Seven yards downfield. Effectively uncovered because it's Tyree Kill on a linebacker, and he put the ball behind him. He limited his yards after the catch. There's a reason that a linebacker just tackled Tyree Kill. Still, two is playing really well so far. He's avoided an egregious mistake, and he's made some great throws. There's a really good pocket movement and a throwaway. So that's another solid throwaway. Not a bad play at all. Live to fight another day. Pedestrian throw. But, I mean, okay. If he had thrown the ball a little higher and hit the running back perfectly in stride, I might give it a good throw. But it's wide open and it's short downfield. It's just a good effort to get in the end zone and, frankly, bad coverage by number 53. That's what happens when you trade Roquan Smith, I guess. Not that Roquan Smith's great either. All right, on to the next drive. All right, the Dolphins have a fair lead, so I expect them to get a little conservative on offense. Oh, that's bad. So that's we're going to grade that as a fumble and a quarterback sack. He sacked himself very literally. And he fumbled. Now we got to see if maybe it was a bad snap, like it was not supposed to be snapped. No, he just didn't catch it. I mean, it was a little low. It wasn't a great snap, but it was certainly, it was at his knee. It's catchable. That's on Tua. That's a really bad play. Brings up 4th and 5, and then Tua with a bad throw. Little play action, just getting the ball out of the way. That's that's good def- or, uh, good offense. 
I think that probably should have been intentional grounding. Let me check. Do they give him the penalty? Yeah, they do. See, here's the thing. If you get an intentional grounding, it counts as a sack in my book. Yeah, that's, that's intentional grounding. Oh, it's not. Yeah, 30 was there. Hey, if you can get away, if you can get away with the technicality, do it. All right, Tua going for everything he's got here. This is one of the most... Okay, we're going to take our time with this play. First of all, ball is at the 15, 16, 17, 18-yard line. Tua has a crow hop into the ball, a perfect pocket, puts everything he's got onto this throw, and it gets to the 30, 29, 28. 18 plus 28 is... It's 46. 100 minus 46 is 54. Meaning, Tua, throwing as far as he can with a perfect pocket and plenty of crow hopping, threw 54 yards downfield. Which is almost exactly as far as I said he would throw last week if he put everything he had onto a ball. It's odd how that works. See it again. 54 yards past the line of scrimmage. Uh, that is a pickable. Uh, let me tell you why. It gets called defensive pass interference? That's bullshit. Eddie Jackson was looking at the ball, trying to make a play on it, because he thought that he could get the pick. Now, they're not going to give you enough replays, because they don't know what's good for them. But you'll see, Eddie Jackson is looking at the ball, tracking it, running the route like a wide receiver. While he's running, Jalen Waddell jumps in his way, stopping him from getting to the ball. So that's a good play by Jalen Waddell. At the least, this is a bad throw. But really? This is pickable. Jalen Waddle makes an incredible play just to touch that ball. We're going to call it bad. I understand if somebody wants to call it pickable, because without a great play by Jalen Waddle, it very well may have been. But I think the most of the time, that ball results in an incompletion, not an interception. I think that the defensive pass interference call was was utter bullshit, and I think that any objective fan would agree. Like Anybody who watches this game for the love of football and not for the love of one of the teams would say, yeah, it was a bad pass interference call. All right, routine throw. It's nice movement. He's rolling right, but he threw it relatively short to a very open receiver. All right, so this play, this is why I talk about pedestrian plays all the time. This is a really easy throw. Dua misses it. Now, if you're rooting for the Dolphins, let's say you have $5,000 on the Dolphins on this play, how do you feel when he misses this throw? Do you say, well, it was a pretty tough throw, sucks he missed it, but it happens. Or do you say, are you fucking kidding me? How did you miss this throw? So that's why we have pedestrian plays, because if he would have made it, you would have said, like, good, you should make that. You wouldn't have been thrilled because it was incredible, right? One, two. I think the Dolphins are just going to churn clock here. they got a three-point lead with three minutes left. They're probably going to do a lot of short stuff, a lot of running. The Bears really locked down the run, so Dolphins are going to have to go for it on third, and that was all there. Look at this. Clean pocket. Very clean pocket. Wide, wide open receiver. And Tua leads the receiver back into the defensive back. Look at this. Wide open. And the reason it's not caught is because Tua put the defensive back right back in the... Look at that. If that ball is thrown even remotely well, it's an easy catch. If it's a good, if it's a great throw, it's a touchdown. If it's an elite throw, it's a walking touchdown. Arm strength matters. Tua didn't have it there. I think that's going to be it. If so, next you'll see the charts. 
So if you look at the chart, Tua actually didn't have a very good game. I thought it was going to be pretty good, just at first glance, having this game on one of my... I had six screens going this week. It was on my fifth screen. So... I thought it was going to be pretty good. I was a little excited for this, honestly. I thought that Tua had finally, like, done something worth the hype, but I I was proven wrong. It started off really hot with those four great throws, and he was, you know, not missing much. He kept the ball out of harm's way for the most part today. Uh, it's the first game all year where he didn't throw an interceptable pass. Uh, he's got 15 of those in seven games. That's not good. But later in the game, when they ceased to be able to scheme plays wide open for him as much, uh, Tua really let his team down. There were several plays where he could have iced the game and, and really put the Bears away, and he didn't. No, most notably, the deep balls. His deep ball was really bad in this game. It's never great, but it was not good at all. Uh, he he turned wide open passes into contested positions, and there's even one play, the one to Eddie Jackson with the defensive pass interference, where, first of all, the Dolphins didn't get punished for his his underthrowing sin, so it, that's nice, but they also might have been lucky to not have gotten picked off. If Jalen Waddle doesn't make a really good play to jump and knock the ball out of the air, there's a decent chance that Eddie Jackson runs through and gets to that ball. Now, I don't think that it was interceptable, but I could see how somebody might. I think that it's really easy to ignore the fumbled snap that led to a self-sack on third and five, but those plays are huge, because first of all, there's just as good a chance of somebody from the defensive line falling on that ball as there is the quarterback. Additionally, Tua, Tua missed the throw on fourth down, the very next play. So while that fumbled snap didn't result in a turnover directly, it certainly did in the grand scheme. Overall, this was a C performance from Tua, in my opinion. He had more negative plays than he did positive plays, but like I said, those four great throws early in the game were really great. His accuracy was just okay at 71.5%. On the season, so far in games I've graded, the average accuracy rate from a starting quarterback is 73%, so I'm not impressed by this 71 from Tua, especially on a fairly simple, on a fairly simple day, right? They were playing a pretty bad Bears defense in pretty favorable conditions typically with the lead like it should have been higher but the Dolphins just keep winning which is why I think Mike McDaniel should be coach of the year and why I think Tyree Kill should be MVP I will note that the Bears offense scored more points than the Dolphins offense were it not for a punt block touchdown Dolphins don't win that game and I don't I don't know but I don't think Tua has anything to do with special teams does this change how good the Dolphins are as a football team absolutely not no Dolphins are a good football team does it change how many wins they have obviously no and does it change how many wins they will have I don't think so but where we apportion credit matters to me, and I don't think that Tua deserves to be getting the lion's share of the blame for the Dolphins' success in this game, or in several of these games, as you can see from the chart here. All right, on to the next video.